Good morning, everyone. Happy Fourth of July. Happy Fourth of July. Before we get started, I just want to go over a few administrative things. I am a uh, Officer Puchetti from the U.S. Immigration Services in Albuquerque. Um, our offices uh, cover uh, almost three quarters of New Mexico from two to consequences north. So um, we're happy to do the ceremony here today on the special day here at Bandelier National Park. Um, before the ceremony begins, I'm going to cover some of the most commonly asked questions and hopefully I'll address all your concerns. And if you still have questions afterwards, you can come see one of us three right here. I'll try to help you. <laughs> <laughs> to afford the dignity, uh, to afford your ceremony the dignity it deserves, please remove your head coverings if they are not part of your faith. Please turn off your cell phones or place it on vibrate or silent during the ceremony as to not disrupt it. Candidates, you will not be a citizen of the United States until you repeat the oath of allegiance during your ceremony today. Um, all of you new citizens received a little white packet. In that packet, I'm going to go over the contents. It has a Department of State U.S. passport application. You uh, uh, find out, you don't have to go through it. I'm just, I'm just going to read off what's on, in there. You'll find a uh, U.S. passport application. Call the post office before you go where they accept U.S. passport applications, okay? There's also a little flyer on important information for new citizens. If uh, you want to go along with the program, um, the words to the Oath of Allegiance are on there, and the Sp Star Spangled Banner and the Pledge of Allegiance, okay? Uh, it also has a white certificate holder where you can put your certificate to keep it from bending or folding. And there's a voter guide to federal elections in there as well. There's two little books in there. One is the Citizen's Almanac and the other one's a pocket size of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. And in separately in the uh, yellow folder, there's the president's congratulatory letter to you. Um, so I talked about the U.S. Passport Agency and that you go to the nearest uh, post office. You can also go on their website and get more information on that. To register to vote, you contact your uh, county registrar's office in the county where you live to register to vote. Um, a word on Social Security Administration. In a couple weeks, please visit their office to update your records with them because if you don't tell them that you became a citizen, they won't know you became a citizen. And also, if you have any other additional questions about U.S. citizenship and immigration services, you can always go to our website. Um, and there's a 1-800 number you can call also for information. So I was talking about safekeeping your certificate. Don't fold it. Don't bend it. Uh, if something happens to it and you lose it or need it to be replaced, it costs $555. So take care of it. Uh, one additional thing. Before you leave, after you get your certificates today, make sure everything is correct on it, the spelling of your name, your birth date. If there's an error on it, let us know, okay? Because after you leave, you'll have to pay to get it corrected, okay? For those of you that lost your uh, green card, I don't think anyone here, just return it to us if you find it, okay? One more thing, there's an instructional letter in your packet. It tells you how to sign your certificate. You can do that at home with a nice black pen on a flat surface. Uh, please do not copy your certificates unless it's for immigration purposes. Like you're gonna petition for your relative, you're gonna send in the original, keep a copy, all right? 
I'm sorry, you're going to send in a copy. You, you can make a copy for that. Okay. But when you send in your, for your passport, you're actually going to send the original to the State Department. And they'll, they'll mail it back. Okay, so when you become a citizen, you can petition for your parents and your brothers and sisters. And the form is called the I-130. You can download that form from our website. For those of you that have children under the age of 18, the U.S. Uh, the Child Citizenship Act of 2000 states that you're, if you are a parent or a nat of a natural-born or adopted child, who is currently less than 18 years old, and is a lawful permanent resident, and is currently residing with you in the United States, your child has derived citizenship from you today. You can obtain that cit proof of citizenship in two different ways. You may apply for a U.S. passport for the child, um, or you can fill out uh, another form, it's the N-600. And it does have a fee with it, okay? I can't tell you which one's better than the other. You can do both or you can do either one. Okay, I hope that answers your questions. Um, and he has something to say, and then I'll get started. Because I'll forget later on to t say this, but there's a, a number of items that are in the bags that were given to you. Um, uh, Western National Parks Association, that's our uh, park store out here, has donated a number of items that are in the bag. Um, uh, just tells you a little bit about the park and where you are today. Uh, the Friends of Bandolier uh, is another one of our partner organizations. Um, they purchased you an American flag with a case uh, for you to take home and um, something for to remember today by. You also have an annual pass to Bandolier National Monument that's good for a year. So y'all can come back as often as you like for the next year uh, and visit the park and, and those were gifts from the Friends of Bandolier. Um, so. <laughs> Did the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution, did y'all have something in the package? Yeah, we have a, we have a tote bag that's we make just for the use for groceries or whatever. Did they need to pick that up after the ceremony? <laughs> yeah, I think so. When we're issuing the certificates, so thank you. Oh, okay, it'll come with the certificates. Right, well, thank y'all for that. Yeah. Okay, great. I would like to welcome you today to uh, the proceedings. Please stand. Oh yeah, we're gonna play the Faces of America.
That was a nice video. It's called Faces of America. Um, I'd like you uh, to please stand. We are going to play the national anthem. citizenship for many normally comes on the day they are born here in the United States. For others, it takes a little while to achieve. All immigrants must first apply and be granted the status of legal permanent residents. Not all who apply are granted this status. Most lawful permanent residents must wait until they've lived in the United States for at least five years. Those that are married to U.S. citizens, it just takes three years. The path is shortened greatly for those who have chosen to join the military and serve with honor and defend the country they are not even a citizen of. Once they met the residence requirements, they can apply for naturalization to become a United States citizen. On the day of their interview, they must also be able to demonstrate knowledge of the English language, including the ability to read and write in English unless exempt. They must also be able to demonstrate knowledge of our country's history and government. They must be able to prove they are of good moral character and subscribe to the principles of the Constitution. If they pass these eligibility requirements, they are then eligible for naturalization to become citizens of the United States. Today, the Citizenship and Immigration Service is pleased to present 13 applicants for United States citizenship representing uh, 15 countries. Will the Candidates, please stand to be recognized as the country of your nationality is called, and then you can be seated. And I know we're missing two. If they arrive on time, we'll get them in. Um, there you go. People's Republic of China. Maybe that's one that's missing. Ghana. India, okay, the second one is missing. Mexico, oh. Nicaragua, oh. the Philippines, oh. Poland. Oh, 
Poland. Who's from Poland? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I knew you were not missing. Singapore? There we go. Sweden? Where's Sweden? I know they're here. Okay, Ukraine? There we are. And last but not least, Vietnam. There we go. The candidates have been examined by a designated immigration services officer and has exhibited sufficient knowledge of the English language, history, and government of the United States. The candidates have been found to be of good moral character, subscribing to the principles of the Constitution and are well disposed uh, to the good order and happiness of the United States. The U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services is pleased to announce that upon taking the oath of allegiance, these applicants will become the newest citizens of the United States. And how awesome is that, that you're becoming a citizen on the 4th of July? <laughs> At this time, I would like to introduce the field office director of USCIS in Albuquerque. Okay. Dedication. The dedication. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Reverse that. Um, um, we're going to have a special message uh, from the New Mexico delegation. Uh, here to my left, we have Sonia Lopez. She's from uh, uh, the office of Congressman Bay, Ben Ray Lujan. Please stand. Uh, we have uh, Michelle Jaquez from uh, Ortiz from U.S. Senator Tom Udall's office. And we also have Eric Castillo from Senator Heinrich's uh, office, and he's going to read the special, special message from the delegation. Good morning. On behalf of U.S. Senators Tom Udall and Martin Heinrich and Congressman Ben Ray Lujan, thank you for inviting us to be part of your celebration this morning. Welcoming you as citizens of the United States is truly an honor. It is a pleasure to join Bandelier National Monument Superintendent Jason Lott, representatives from the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, and all the individuals and groups who are part of today's events. We welcome you as our country's newest citizens here in one of our nation's oldest landmarks. So first, we just want to say congratulations. This is your day. Today is a great step forward in your lives and also for our country. Each of you is part of the heritage and promise of America. We are not Americans just because of an oath or a piece of paper. We are Americans because of an idea, the idea of freedom and equal opportunity. That idea has brought millions to our shores and borders for over 200 years and has defined who we are. Our nation began with the idea of equality. In the words of the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. It was a giant step forward in human rights, but it was only a beginning, and many of our fellow citizens dedicated their lives to the promise of America, and it brought us all here today. We are a nation of immigrants. From the very beginning, immigrants have helped def defend our freedoms, even when they did not always fully enjoy those freedoms themselves. Each of you has your own unique story of hard work, sacrifice, striving for a better life for yourself and for your families, Many of you overcame great challenges to be here today. The important thing is, you kept going. You kept your hopes alive. That is the character that makes America strong, the determination, the dream of a better life, the refusal to give up. That is the rich history of immigrants. In New Mexico, we celebrate our diversity. We treasure our immigrant traditions. It is part of who we are, part of our identity. We are called the land of enchantment, not just because of our beautiful landscapes like the special place where you take your oaths today, but also because of our people. We have a blend of cultures like nowhere else. We understand the strength this brings to New Mexico and the contributions persons from every background make to our communities. Citizenship is a great privilege and a great responsibility. 
We hope that you will make your voice heard. Congratulations again. Good luck in your future as citizens of our nation, and thank you for allowing us to be part of this great day. Thank you. I think this is the part you've all been waiting for. I'd like to uh, introduce um, Field Office Director, Mr. Jesse Mendes, to uh, administer the Oath of Allegiance, and he'll probably say a few words before so. So uh, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Come on, today's a special day. You can do much better than that. How's everybody doing? Yeah, there we go. There we go. So happy 4th of July, and uh, to all of you, happy Citizenship Day, because today you will become citizens. So it's, it's an incredible thing. Uh, what, what is happening today is very, very special, not because of it is, just because it is the 4th of July, but because of what you're about to do here in a few minutes. You're going to take an oath and officially transform into United States citizens right in front of us. Um, for us, it's something that we do uh, quite a bit throughout the year, but it never loses its meaning. And, and we understand how important this is to you. It's a once-in-a-lifetime event. Um, so I hope you, you cherish today, and I, I hope you clearly understand what you're doing today and, and embrace uh, your new role as citizens of this country. Uh, I, I think it's a tremendous thing that you're doing. Uh, I, I will tell you that I myself am quite jealous of, of the experience that you all will, will have today. Uh, for us that were born here, as uh, Jackie Buschetti mentioned, uh, we, were, we, we don't celebrate the day we became citizens. We celebrate the day that we were born, our birthday, uh, but we never celebrate the day that we became citizens of the United States. You all have the, the distinction to be able to do that now. So from here on out, and what a day to do it, right? Uh, every 4th of July, you'll be able to celebrate not only our nation's independence, but also the day that you became citizens of this country. So I, I, I think it's great, and, and, uh, and you know, one of the things that, that I find very impressive, uh, as, as you mentioned, the, the diversity in, in this state, uh, here we have uh, 15 individuals from 11 different countries. That's incredible. Uh, but it's impressive because we have individuals that have experienced life in 11 different countries. You've seen what those countries had to offer. And something brought you here. Something made you choose the United States. And you embarked on a journey that I'm sure was difficult and long for most of you. And here you are today at the culmination of that journey. You're becoming United States citizens. Uh, I, I think it's tremendous. I, I think it's tremendous because for those of us that were born here, we love being United States citizens. We appreciate it. Uh, but I don't think we understand it because you've experienced something different and you've chosen us. You've chosen this citizenship. So I, I think it's incredible. Uh, but again, keeping in mind what we celebrate today, let's not forget that this is not something that spontaneously came into being. You know, the freedoms, the rights that we have today, uh, those were something that, that Americans before you have sacrificed so much, not only to ensure that they existed, but to ensure that they, preserved, that they were preserved throughout the generations. You enjoy the freedoms, you enjoy the rights, and, and the things that brought you to this country because of those sacrifices. So today we, we talk about the 4th of July and the Declaration of Independence. Uh, when we think about that, we, we, we can look back and, and look at the, the incredible thing that happened back in 1776. Uh, the Second Continental Congress at that time, you know, if you think about it, declared to the world uh, their independence from the greatest superpower at that time, from Great Britain. 56 patriots put their names on paper and let the world know that they were declaring independence, that we had rights, that we were entitled to freedom. That is incredible. It is incredible because they put everything on the line, not only for themselves, for their families, and for every other American that, that occupied the colonies at that time. And every generation of Americans since then has sacrificed and has done so much to ensure that those freedoms and those rights uh, continue to, to, to uh, thrive through, through the history of this country. 
You're going to take an oath here in a couple of minutes, and that responsibility is now going to be yours. It will be your responsibility to make sure that what brought you here, the freedoms, the rights that you enjoy as Americans, are here for future generations. Not only your future generations, but any American after you, okay? It's an incredible, incredible responsibility, and I hope you understand that. Now, on a lighter note, what did you all think about the, uh, the uh, Faces of America video? Yeah? That is one of my favorite videos, and, and it's one of my favorite videos because it really highlights the diversity in this country. Um, one of the questions that I've been asked from time to time is, what does an American look like? And my, my response is very easy. This is what an American looks like. This is what an American looks like. Okay? You all are going to be Americans here in a few minutes. And you will pledge allegiance to this country, and this will be your country as much as any other United States citizens. But that does not mean that you have to forget the countries that you came from, that you have to forget your customs, your traditions. Don't forget those. Because those and, and that diversity is what makes us stronger as a country. And, and not only embrace those, but share those with your family, share those with your friends. Uh, because as I mentioned, that diversity makes us stronger, but understanding and accepting that diversity is what unites us. Uh, so don't forget that. So with that said, let's get the official part of this out of the way, and let's go ahead and make you citizens. So for all of you becoming citizens today, if you'll please stand, raise your right hand. Family members, uh, this is a perfect opportunity to take a photo. You will not get a retake on this one. Okay, so for all of you, uh, please loudly repeat after me. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state or sovereignty, of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen, that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely without any purpose of evasion, mental reservation or purpose of evasion, so help me God. So help me God. Okay. Congratulations to our newest citizens. So please, uh, I don't think you have to mark your calendars because you'll remember the 4th of July, but uh, make note of the time because at this very minute you are America's newest citizens. Please be seated. So to the new citizens, let me ask you a question, and, and you, you have to know this because you had to study it. What are the first three words to the Constitution? I can't hear you. Say it louder. Now everybody, we the there you go, we the people. 
That represents you more than ever before today. This is as much your country as it is any other United States citizen. There are no tiers to citizenship. You hold the same citizenship as any other United States citizen. The only exception being, of course, that you cannot uh, run for the office of president, but other than that, you have every right, every uh, responsibility of, of any other United States citizen. Uh, I, I think it's incredible. Now, I, I'm going to ask you all to do something uh, for me. I, I want all of the new citizens to please turn around and look at everybody here in this room. Thank you. So the reason I wanted you to do that is I want you to see that everybody here is here because of you. Everybody is here because they understand how important you are, not only to each and every one of us, but to this country, okay? You are, you di just did an incredible thing. You became United States citizens. And today, on the 4th of July, uh, uh, it, it's a fitting day because today is a day when most Americans spend the day celebrating with their families. Well, here we are celebrating with you. You are now part of our family, okay? I am very, very honored to have been a part of your ceremony and to have administered the oath to you. And I'm, I'm just incredibly proud of all of you. Uh, I can't wait to see what you all will do as our newest citizens, and I am sure that you will make us all very, very proud. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, to keep up that spirit, two things. Um, we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance, just a second, and, that, and we're going to break out into song, le led by, uh, again, by Alicia Solomon, and we're going to sing My Land is Your Land. So please stand, we'll face the flag, and I want to hear it loud and clear. We're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You guys don't. <laughs> Your land is, you can sit down if you want. <laughs> So much that was great. Um, I would like to introduce our special guest speaker, uh, Mr. Jason Lott, Superintendent of Bandelier National Monument. My fellow Americans, a few minutes ago I would have had to have addressed you as something else, but but now, my fellow Americans. I, um, congratulations. It's a special day. Good morning and welcome to Bandelier National Monument, your backyard, and now your favorite national park. <laughs> On behalf of National Park Service Acting Director Dan Smith and the Bandelier staff, it is my honor and privilege to be in front of you today, a day that welcomes 15 new citizens onto its rolls. And what a perfect way for us to celebrate America's birthday on the 4th of July with its newest members of the world's oldest democracy. By definition, as a citizen of a democracy, you're formally part of the government. Ours is a system in which supreme power is vested in the people. 
for which you are now a member. This power resides with your rights to free speech, your vote, and our collective ability to elect good representatives to our local, state, and national government. Please take this responsibility seriously. It does make a difference. Now, in addition to formalizing your naturalization and citizenship, we're all also here to celebrate your engagement with the American dream. You are now accepted as a citizen of a nation in which all people are created equal, and all are endowed by the Creator with the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These basic principles are outlined in our Declaration of Independence, signed just 243 years ago today, establishing our nation that is both yours and mine as a country that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. But be clear, ours is a government that is not here to serve you as an individual. It was established to serve the collective us, the people. So you're now part of something that is bigger than just you. So how do you make this work for you? How do you make this work for the people? Going forward from today, I encourage you to fully embrace these principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Be proud of your new role as a citizen of the United States of America. Know that the happiness will not just be handed to you, but is instead a state of being that you must strive to achieve. America is a land of opportunity where citizens have the freedom to pursue their dreams, a place in which everyone has a choice to make a difference in their community and ultimately to improve the quality of life for yourself, your families, and for other citizens, the people of our great nation. There are no limitations because of your cultural background, your beliefs, your religion, or your politics. Keep in mind that achieving your dream takes work, mostly hard work. Today, you have to overcome a sizable hurdle. Seize this opportunity that you have been given and know that America needs you. It requires your active participation, your fresh, per your fresh perspectives, your sweat, your skills, and your faithfulness. One of the greatest ways you can embrace the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is to be involved. Voting, of course, is an incredible right and privilege, but I also encourage you to engage in other ways. Understand the issues. Don't simply let someone else, or a group, or even a political party direct how you vote or think. Have well-structured and thoughtful opinions. Speak out and challenge your elected representatives. These are the officials that we have collectively chosen to represent us. Volunteer your time and talent to help those less fortunate or to better your community. It is when we give of ourselves, our talent and our resources, this is how our country became great. By each of us not expecting our government to serve us as individuals, but as each of us remembering that we are the people. We are a government by the people for the people. Support our troops, our public servants, and those that are actively working to improve and to protect our way of life. Be a good neighbor. Understand and support the privileges of others to have their own opinions and beliefs. If needed, be prepared to defend those others and even their opinions, whether you agree with them or not. And you should expect the same. Your values, your opinions, your religion will be protected as well. We should all respect other opinions or beliefs so long as they do not infringe or degrade your rights to life, liberty, and your pursuit for happiness. But do not stop there. Learn and understand all aspects of our nation, both at the local level and the national level. Have informed opinions, engage others, and have a voice. Attend public meetings, write letters, engage your representatives. If so inclined, run for office. But most importantly, vote. These are your rights. Do not waste them. This is your land and your nation. Make it work for you. Ours is a government tasked with serving the people. Give more than you take and expect the best. Please know that being a part of the ceremony is a privilege that I do not take lightly. The opportunity to associate and to support a group of people making such a commitment is a great honor. I realize that each of you have renounced your former citizenship in other countries. I expect that for many of you that this was not an easy decision. Please know that while you have renounced your former citizenship and pledged your loyalty to the United States, 
you have not surrendered your own history and culture. Those things that you cherish about your past, your memories of family and friends, your heritage, your music, your literature, your celebrations, your manners, these are still a part of you. And they belong here with you now. Your fellow Americans have much to learn from you. The qualities of your background define who you are. And the collective of our diversity as citizens enriches who we are as a nation, the people. Today, each of you have made a conscious decision to become an American citizen, which is a significant milestone in your life and marks the beginning of a new chapter. And what better place for a new start than in a national park, land that now belongs to you. As a citizen of the United States, these federal parks are yours. And I challenge each of you to hold myself, the National Park Service, and the federal government accountable on how we manage your lands and your resources. Take pride in your ownership of these places and speak out if you do not approve. I promise you, we will listen. These are your national parks. Take ownership. I realize that each of you had to work hard to achieve your U.S. citizenship. Many having to learn a new language as well as adjusting to a new way of life. I suspect that many of us who are born in this country may never realize the risk that you took to be here today. Your abandonment of one life with its challenges but fully understanding its cultures and ways, more than likely leaving behind family and friends and moving your allegiance from one country to another and starting anew was surely no small endeavor. Whereas I, as well as many others, was born into U.S. citizenship with its many benefits, you made sacrifices and took risk through motivation, determination, and tenacity, you are here today. You have chosen to invest in the United States. And today, we choose to invest in you. From now on, we'll refer to this as our country, yours and mine. With this ceremony today, we all reaffirm our commitment as citizens, as well as another truth, that our nation's success would simply not be possible without the generations of immigrants who have come to our shores from every country in the world. Unless you're a Native American, we all trace our ancestry to those that took great risk to overcome monumental challenges to arrive here from somewhere else. Whether they arrived to the original colonies or set foot on Ellis Island across the Rio Grande, all came to America with hopes of a better life. And you have this right as well. Make the best of it. It is my hope that in years to come, as you look, take part in future Fourth of, Ju Fourth of July festivities, you'll look back fondly on today as a very special day. A day in which you took your final step for citizenship, but also the day that you became a part of something great, something larger. I hope that you remember the challenges that are set forth to you today, specifically the challenge to vote, to work hard, to positively contribute to society, and to achieve happiness. I hope that you will look back with pride that you met and surpassed each of these challenges and that your contributions were not only for yourself and your family, but also for the greater good of this country, the people. The United States of America is a place to succeed, to prosper, and to live a good life. On behalf of the staff of Bandelier National Monument, I congratulate you on becoming citizens of this great nation, and I'm looking forward to your successes as our nation's newest citizens. Good luck, and God bless you. Uh, thank you, Superintendent Lott. We get to sing again. Please join Alicia Solomon. We're going to sing Grand Old Flag.
going to watch a congratulatory video from the President of the United States. My dear fellow Americans, it is with great pride that I welcome you into the American family. No matter where you come from or what faith you practice, this country is now your country. Our history is now your history. And our traditions are now your traditions. You enjoy the full rights and the sacred duties that come with American citizenship. Very, very special. There is no higher honor. There is no greater responsibility. You now share the obligation to teach our values to others, to help newcomers assimilate to our way of life, and uplift America by living according to its highest ideals of self-governance and its highest standards. All Americans are your brothers and sisters, and each of us must do our part to keep America safe, strong, and free. America is our home. We have no other. You have pledged allegiance to America, and when you give your love and loyalty to America, she returns her love and loyalty to you. We share one American heart and one American destiny. It is a destiny filled with love, opportunity, and hope. We celebrate this day. We welcome you into our national family. We applaud your devotion to America, and we embrace the wonderful future we will have together. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America.
From the staff of the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service, I would like to congratulate each and one of you on your accomplishments, wish you luck in your pursuit of the American dream, and thank your family and friends for being here for their support. Uh, we look forward to each of our new citizens making a unique contribution to the greatness of the United States. One more round of applause, I'll give you instruction. <laughs> Okay, we're going to uh, have uh, our office director hand out the certificates to each one of you. Family members can also take pictures. Um, the uh, Daughters of uh, the American Revolution have a bag to hand out. Um, we have the flags to give you from the Park Service. And we'd also give a, uh, once you get your certificate, you're free to go unless you want uh, additional pictures. I'd like to give a special thanks to the Friends of Bandelier, Western National Parks Association, Los Alamos Rotary, Flowers by Jillian, Los Alamos Clerk of the Court, Los Alamos Daughters of the American Revolution, and Alicia Solabon. So as I call your name, uh, please come up and get your certificate. Sylvia Denise Kraus. <laughs> Luis Enrique Peña Villarreal. Suez Jamin Quesada a la Torre. Rosemary Sumiyang Luhan. Fiona Ku Wong. Okay, this is going to be a challenge. <laughs> Jadwiga Koalas Bershara. <laughs> Not Mien Yuan. Rosalba Ortiz Barragan. Mario Landeros. Victoria Keima Keboa. Oscana Antonova Thornton. Mm 
Uziel Ozem Vargas Garcia. Okay, that concludes our ceremony. If you would like to take pictures, I think there's refreshments outside. Can we try, we never get this done right in a year, but if we could go out real quick, right in the courtyard, and take a group picture with all the new citizens yeah, together, great. that would be wonderful. Perfect. Let's go right now. So let's do that right now. Right now.